gradually as underneath the water, the creature relaxes its muscles in death, allowing the body of to bob to the surface, his head twisted around backwards at a sickening angle, and they realize that <laughs> has been killed by this. Well, that was an eventful and very productive first roll. Well, hello and welcome back once again to Me, Myself, and Die. I am, as always, your GM, player, and host, Trevor DeVal. Thanks so much for tuning in. And as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Let us uh, get on with things. First of all, I was having a bit of a a bit of a brainwave as I was uh, considering the vow, the main vow of Arn, which is find and slay the scourge of the mountain and get revenge for the people of Wolfstone. I think it's better to name vows in such a way as you have an endpoint, but you don't specifically detail the methods by which you accomplish that end point. The reason why I say this is because I like to keep the possibilities open in terms of how I go about accomplishing the objective. So right now the objective is find and slay the scourge. Well, that's pretty specific. The only way I can accomplish that vow is by hunting down Thagolos the dragon and killing him. Okay, that's cool. But there might be another way to fulfill the vow if the purpose of the vow is to free the people of Wolfstone from the Scourge of the Dragon. Because as we've established, the people are, of Wolfstone have no home and they're moving from cave to cave and from place to place and they're always being pursued by this dragon that's trying to wipe them out. So for me, I think what is, what is really the heart of the vow here is freeing them from the Scourge of the Mountain, freeing them from Thalgalos. Now that doesn't necessarily mean Thalgalos has to die, Although that's certainly what Arn has in mind, and that's the whole reason why he's going after the spear. So that is still, you know, very much uh, a tactic that he intends to employ. But what I'm saying is, I think it keeps the, the sort of narrative situation a little more fluid if, if there might be other possibilities for freeing the people of Wolfstone that, that have something to do other than hunting down the dragon and killing the dragon. I don't know if there is a case. Honestly, I don't even have anything in mind. I just thought, in my opinion, it's always, it's better in these cases to keep your vows open in terms of how you can approach them. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the wording of this vow from find and slay the scourge to free the people of Wolfstone from the scourge. Nothing else changes. I've made no progress towards it anyway, so it's not like anything's really, really altered. So onto our current situation where Arn has uh, sworn a vow to rescue the people of Highmark from the Husk by the name of Hogvindil, who raided the village and captured all of the people and took them back to his offshore island covered in fog. The Husk derives its own sustenance from actually draining the life force of its victims. So that's what's going on with the people of Highmark right now. So, so Arn and Ormir and Thorbjorn, the old man, the old fisherman who's uh, agreed to help them get to the island, really have to get uh, things going. So we are going to be delving. That's right. We're going to be launching into the delve mechanics here because they are going to the island of Hogvindil. So I have filled out a delve sheet here. The objective is to find and rescue the folk of Highmark. That is important. The theme in this case is fortified because it is a raider encampment. So there's going to be, you know, pirates and Viking types everywhere. There's going to be two domains. One is sea caves and one is stronghold. I'm imagining that the island once they get there, has tiny little almost like smugglers coves situated all over the, the outside of the island and that the island itself is riddled with an internal network of tunnels, sea tunnels, sea caves, this kind of thing. But no one knows the and how to navigate that, that maze of sea tunnels. So I think that what's gonna happen on the delve sheet is it is a formidable site. Every progress they make is one box. The first four boxes of the site exploration are going to be sea caves. Then the next boxes are gonna be Stronghold. And the idea there is, I want them to, to have to navigate these sea tunnels and explore what's there until they find like a set of natural stone steps that leads up into the underbelly of the Stronghold itself, at which point we switch the domains. Now, that might change based on the roles I make, but, but that's, kind of my, that's kind of my setup right now. So again, it's not, you know, bog standard delve rules, but it's sort of uh, making the rules my own. Arn and Ormir, have been taken on a couple of boats by Thorbjorn. I say a couple of boats because Thorbjorn knows that there's a number of his people, like a large number of his people, that were captured. They have to get to that island, find these people, rescue them, and get them back, which means they're gonna have to take them in a boat. But one boat is not gonna be enough. 
Probably two boats is not gonna be enough, but it's what they have. So let's find out. Arn and Ormir, guided across the waters by Thorbjorn, make their way, as I said, through the fog of the sea until finally they can see a large, shady gray black object rising out of the mist in front of them. This, of course, is the island of Hogvendel. The sea crashes against the edges of the cliff face as the large black cave yawns in front of them. They pull up towards it, towing this second boat behind them. Thorbjorn turns to Arn. It will be very dangerous inside. I know very little about the interior of this place, but I do know that if we keep our eyes open, we may be able to find a stairway that goes up into the bowels of the fortress itself. Very well. And we will have to keep our eyes open for whatever comes. And they slowly row their way inside the yawning cave mouth that leads into the Byzantine maze of tunnels underneath the fortress. Slowly and as quietly as they can, Thorbjorn dipping the oars of the rowboat into the water again as the water sort of slash, sloshes up against the inside of these flooded tunnels. Arn has lit a torch because the inside of the tunnel is completely black. Black is black as night. Shadows play off of the, the dark, rocky tunnel walls and, and flicker off of the, the, the waters ahead of them. What is the first area they come from as they slowly begin to navigate their, their way through these maze of tunnels? Features 21 is going to be on the Sea of Cape, watery tunnels. So this first area here, Perhaps it was designed to be like this, we're not exactly sure, but there are a number of branching tunnels. Each one could lead anywhere. They're not entirely sure. They're going to have to explore them to find out. They're slowly making their way. They're trying to stop and listen and maybe they hear something from another tunnel. Maybe they hear voices, something like that. They have to make sure that there's no large rock protrusions from the water that might scrape against the side of the boat, causing damage to it. So this is going to be with wits. His wits, unfortunately, is two. Here we go. Oh, well, that's great. Uh, <laughs> that's a miss with a match. Okay, off to a great start. Reveal a danger. Here we go. What is the danger that gets revealed in these tunnels? 21, that is on the fortified. Unexpected alliance revealed. I think what that means is, is that there is some sort of sea beast that lives in these waters that some of the raiders, or maybe Hogvendil himself, has enslaved to its will. We have a miss on this with a match, which means that um, there's a major plot twist. Someone or something goes missing. Oh, okay, I know, so. <laughs> Thorbjorn is, is at the back. Ormir is keeping the torch uh, lit here, but Arn is looking ahead, he's got his bow drawn. The sound of the boat sort of cutting its way through the water, the water of the tunnels lapping its way up against the sides of the boat when all of a sudden there was a splash and a cry oh! as Thorbjorn suddenly, as though grabbed by something, goes careening over the side into the water. Arn makes his way to the back of the boat. Thorbjorn, Thorbjorn! He's looking desperately. Ormir, bring that torch over here. Ormir comes over, they're at the back of the boat now. The, the, the boat is kind of like, bobbing up and down on the water as it's been disturbed by something. As they look inside, there's no sign of Thorbjorn, but bursting out of the water beside them is this hideous eel-like creature with tiny little clawed arms. This thing is just gonna represent its sort of head. Now they failed on their delve with a miss. They rolled the match. Thorbjorn's already been taken. I think that this counts as them being completely ambushed. So there's also the, the, the frantic splashing and cries of Thorbjorn as he's sort of being held underneath the water by some other appendage of the creature. Enter the fray. He is being ambushed. This is a roll of wits. Plus two. Does Arn succeed on this four? No, he does not, which means combat begins with you at a disadvantage, pay the price, and the foe has initiative. Well, I'm just gonna roll randomly to see what pay the price is. 17, your action has an unintended effect. Your action of going over the side and looking for Thorbjorn has an unintended effect, and that unintended effect is, as this thing bursts through the water, and Arn has already frantically called Ormir over with the, the, the torch, the entire boat lurches up as their weight causes it to kind of careen uh, too much to the, the aft of the, the boat, causing them to crash into each other and to try and not fall over the side of the boat. So this is a face danger with edge plus three. 
Here we go. Seven. Oh my God. <laughs> it's another miss and a match. They've gone over to the side of the boat. The boat has moved up like this. The creature has flopped onto it, basically causing the boat to, to, to come up even more to the water. And both of them go splashing out into the water. Now, because it was a match, something even worse happens. And I think what that something worse is has to do with Ormir. Ormir's head cracks against the side of the other boat and knocks him out into the water. He is unconscious in the water. That's not good. And Arn is in the water as well. And this thing has initiative, which means it immediately moves towards Arn. I think his bow is out of his hand, probably still back on the thing. He pulls out a knife, like a hunting knife that he has, desperately trying to fend off the attacks of this thing as he tries to scramble for purchase to get back on the boat. Because as long as he's in the water, he's in big, big trouble. This is going to be a clash roll. This is an iron roll. Okay, he's rolling plus two. As it comes to snap its razor teeth on him. He rolls, oh my God, he rolls a four. He's outmatched and must pay the price. The foe still has initiative. Well, it clamps down, I think maybe on his midsection or maybe his leg, inflicts three harm, which brings Arn down to one because his max health is only four. He's got to endure harm, iron plus two. Uh, weak hit, so he presses on. It still has the initiative. I think it's gonna try and drag him under. He is gonna face danger by grabbing the boat and trying to haul himself up. This is also going to be iron, which is no good for him, but he's gotta try. Okay, a weak hit. So he does succeed in being prevented from being pulled under the water. This is definitely, he's gonna suffer minus one momentum for this. He's face danger, but the thing still has the initiative. So it is snapping at him, trying to pull him down, and it's going to try and bite at him again. This is another clash, unless Arn decides at this moment to turn the tide. Mmm, turn the tide. He is honor bound, which means that when he does turn the tide, he can make the move with plus two and take a plus one momentum. I think he's got to. I think he wants per fight. He risks it all. And how does he risk it all? He, he knows his vow to these people is foremost on his mind. He has got to save Ormir. He's got to save Thorbjorn. He's got to save this people. He tries to turn the tide, which means he seizes the initiative from his opponent and makes a move. What is the move? He's still in the water. He's got to get back on that boat and grab his bow because that is the most effective weapon he has against this thing right now. That is going to be, this is an edge face danger. Boom, and he is honor bound. So he's gonna roll this with plus two and take plus one momentum on a hit as well. Face danger with edge, which is plus three. And he's rolling at plus two, which is seven, which is a strong hit. He gains momentum because of his honor bound. So he goes back up to 10. Strong at face danger. Uh, 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 you're successful, take plus one momentum. He can't be over 10. So his momentum's at 10. He has succeeded in hauling himself up he's stolen the initiative he grabs the bow turns because he has the initiative and fires a barrage of arrows he takes extra shots so he's going to suffer one supply so as he fires arrow after arrow into this thing his supply now goes down to three here we go plus three which is a seven he gets a strong hit which means he does three harm because of his archer talent it's plus two harm he just did five harm to this thing so arrows go sailing into this thing greenish blood bursts forth into the water as the arrows penetrate its scaly flesh he retains the initiative of a strong hit he's got to get in there and he's got to save his buddies who are currently drowning by this thing he's got to fire again which means he is going to do a regular strike which is edge come on buddy okay but it's plus edge which is three which is five which is a strong hit Three more harm. One, two, three, which means the thing is now at eight out of 10 boxes. He is going to do the move to end the fight. This is a progress move. He's rolling against eight. If he makes this, the thing is dead. Oh, well, it's a weak hit, so he does kill it. However, there is a fight. Uh, there's, there's a problem to this. An existing danger worsens or something of value is lost. Someone important must pay the cost. Guys, there is only one explanation to this. Someone important must pay the cost. The thing that has been thrashing under the water and holding down poor Thorbjorn 
in its death throes, maybe it's got like its tail sort of wrapped around his neck and arm, kind of thing like this. Poor Thorbiel and the old man is trying desperately to escape, but there's nothing he can do. He's old and frail and wounded from last time, but the thing in its death throes squeezes and thrashes, snapping the old man's neck as it does. Thorbjorn is dead. Blood fills the water as the thing slinks away down to the depths of the watery tunnel. Dead. Arn immediately jumps in the water to grab Ormir and get him up. This is also going to be a face danger, but on what? We haven't even made progress on the delve yet. This is just a miss. This is all just a big, bad miss. I think this is iron. This is this is just, this is about endurance. He can see Ormir sort of slipping underneath the water. I think this is about leaping in, grabbing him, trying to swim up to the surface and pull him up. So this is gonna be plus iron again, not something that Or uh, uh, Arn is um, great at. I think he's just gonna roll this in plus two. Okay, well, it's a weak hit, which means yeah, you know what, he's gonna be delayed. So it takes him a little longer than he thought. And there's danger as, you know, or Ormir is now slowly starting to suck in water and beginning to drown. But he is able to grab Ormir and haul him back up on the boat. He suffers a momentum. So his momentum goes down now to nine. He's basically, you know, pumping the water out of Ormir's lungs. Ormir, Ormir, wake up! Finally, Ormir coughs and, you know, seawater belches forth and uh, uh, uh. he's dazed but alive. He's gonna have a big old shiner on the back of his head, but he is, for the moment, okay. They spend a few minutes looking around, uh, like, you know, Ar Arn's, you know, shouting into the darkness, Thorbjorn, Thorbjorn! But gradually, as underneath the water, the creature relaxes its muscles in death, allowing the body of Thorbjorn to bob to the surface, his head twisted around backwards at a sickening angle, and they realize that Thorbjorn has been killed by this. Well, that was an eventful and very productive first roll. Arn is wounded. He's really hurt bad, and I think he's bleeding openly from this wound. I think he has to do a heal. He's rolling on his wits, which is plus two. This is to heal himself, but he does have Ormir's help on this. Uh, seven is a failure. No. I'm burning momentum. I'm going from nine back down to two because I can't afford to fail anymore. That's what momentum is for. So that turns that into a strong hit. So he goes back up to health plus three. So he's able to bind that wound, but only by spending his momentum, as I said, which resets now at two. Now it's uh, time to go on. They don't have time to do anything about Thorbjorn's body. They have to try and pull their way using these two little boats, uh, boats through the tunnels as best they can, which means doing yet another delve the depth roll. They're now concerned that there was some alliance with the Vikings and uh, these creatures, which leads Arn to believe that there might be more. So therefore he's gonna go a little more carefully, a little more quietly. That could cost them some time, but he has to be careful. They can't afford an attack like that again. So he is going to roll with stealth as they slowly, slowly, carefully, quietly move through these tunnels, keeping an eye out for the best way to go. <laughs> which means they roll plus shadow, which is plus three. Delve the depths, plus three, seven, on a match and a strong hit. On a strong hit, you mark progress and find an opportunity and we have a match. So something beneficial happens as well. Let's see what this opportunity is gonna be. The opportunity is 33. An aspect of the history or nature of this place is revealed. You know what? I'm just gonna take the momentum at this point. They mark progress, so they come to a new area for one thing. I guess we need to find out what that area is first. Yeah, let's find out what that area first. Uh, it is 19. Oh, a command center or leadership. A command center. Oh, oh, I know what they find. A command center in the sea. <laughs> okay, great. They move through the tunnels for a few minutes, but very quickly come out into a much larger cavern which they can see, the open ocean from this cavern. And they can see there's a large wooden dock that's been built into the side of this cavern. And inside this cavern, by this large dock, is the Viking Raider ship. It is the command center in the sea cave, which means this is where the Viking Raider ship is. So their little side tunnel has emerged into the main cavern. So we discover something about the nature or history of this place. Okay, that accomplishes that. There's a match involved. Here's what I think the match means. The match means that there's, at this moment, for some reason, the boat is unattended. 
here's the thing. So they pull out of the water and there they can see the, this long, black, uh, sleek looking Viking raider ship. And they're, they're immediately like, uh oh, we're, we're potentially caught out in the open here in this water as we see this large chamber in front of us. But for some reason, None of the Vikings are there. They can see the spoils of their raids. They can see various bits of, you know, crates and barrels and, you know, uh, 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 absconded loot and things like this that the, the Vikings have, have obviously stolen from other settlements up and down the, uh, the, the ragged coast and perhaps the barrier islands themselves. You know what? I think that because this is the Viking ship, obviously there's going to be an area that you can immediately go up to the main stronghold from this area or very close. So here's what I'm gonna do. I said that originally, in order to start using the stronghold part of the domain, in other words, like they find an area, they find a way to get up into the bowels of the stronghold itself. I think that now I'm gonna bump that down so that after two marks on the progress track, which means that they only have to make one more progress track before they find basically the staircase, the ladder or whatever that leads up into the fortress itself or one of them, because there very well could be many of them. Okay, so they don't see it right now. It's, it's somewhere nearby. Here's the thing. This ship could be very useful in getting the freed captives out of here. Because remember, those captives are all fishermen and sailors. They know how to operate a ship. Arn can't operate a ship by himself. Him and Ormir can't, but they need a crew. If they find the sailors, they could take this ship, providing that it's still unguarded, unlikely. So that's one thing Arn considers. The other thing he considers is, should we just destroy this thing now? Ormir, this could be an opportunity for us, not only to stop these raiders here and now, but to prevent them from ever harassing the coast again. I wonder if we should oil it and burn it. But it is also the best chance we have at rescuing as many of the villagers as possible, if that many are still alive. That is the question, Ormir. I confess I am unsure of how to proceed at the moment. I think, though, that Arn is going to play it safe and not destroy the ship, because I think He's gonna keep that in the back of his mind that the ship is here, and if they have to grab the ship and get out, that it is an exit point. Okay, all right, great. I think they put the boats aside because I think that now what they see is a number of small tunnels going off into the darkness. And I think there's also a couple of torches in uh, torch brackets and, and sconces sort of uh, stuck into the, the, the cavernous walls every now and then, so they don't need their own torch. But they slowly creep their way along some of these, these foot tunnels trying to find uh, a way to get up into the fortress itself. Presuming, of course, that that is where the captives are located. We don't know that for sure, but that's an assumption that uh, they're going with mostly because old Thorbjorn, I think, probably would have said that, yeah, it's probably likely they're keeping our people uh, upstairs. As they make their way through these tunnels, what is the next area that they come to? A camp or quarters. Okay, well that actually makes sense. The first area they come to off of one of these side tunnels is in fact a small barracks for some of the raiders. Are there raiders here? And I think this is nighttime, so it's, it's conceivable that they're sleeping. You know, if there are a number of raiders here in this barracks and the sleeping quarters, uh, it's almost certain 11 or more. Uh, oh, there are no raiders here. Okay, well, our luck changes a bit. It is a barracks, but there are no raiders here, which again leads me to believe that the reason why there are no raiders here at night when perhaps they should be is because everybody is upstairs partaking in this husk ceremony of draining the captives of their life essence, probably, because they're not here. Why weren't they here? So they are going to roll delve with haste to get through here and see what happens. This is rolling at plus three which is eight, another strong hit. On a strong hit, you delve deep for mark progress and find an opportunity. So we mark progress. On, oh, you know what as well? Having the two fishing boats and having preserved them from the battle with this eel creature and also finding the boat, which is unmanned, I think that's gonna count as a milestone on his vow. He's rolled a strong hit, which means he marks pro progress and he finds an opportunity. The opportunity in this barracks is going to be 67, which is a clue offers insight or direction. And I think he's gonna take the momentum as well. Now there's no guards here. The clue that they find is, they hear the sound of very, very faint voices. And the voices are coming from a, a, a tunnel just off to their right. And as they slowly make their way past and through the, the guard barracks, actually not so slowly as they're sort of hustling their way through the guard barracks. And they see just ahead by the flickering shadows of their torch, they can see a set of stone steps that go up into the belly of the fortress. And that brings us from sea cave 
to Stronghold. They move their way slowly up the steps into the next area. First area of the Stronghold is going to be 86. A courtyard, interesting. So <laughs> the, the steps lead up out of the darkness into a courtyard in the center of this fortress. Now, what I'm imagining this fortress is, this is a fortress basically built on an old ruin. It has ancient stone walls that have, you know, uh, old ancient, ancient, ancient crenellations, most of which though are all completely like fallen into ruin. But there are signs of new build, new, new structures, like new wooden palisade walls or along the outside of the fortress. It would be very, very difficult to attack this place because it sits atop of this rocky, cliffside basically so it'd be almost impossible to scale the walls up there it's a very defensible area and of course it's wreathed in unnatural fog but they come out and it is nighttime but they come into an open air courtyard and there they can see you know strewn with detritus and ruin and, and bits of wood and stone and everything like this a courtyard where i think that there are a number of uh, buildings across uh, all connected by this massive stone wall uh, fortress kind of thing. What is in the fortress and how they deal with this? Well, I think they're gonna have to sneak their way across the fortress because they are now, they've heard voices, so they know someone is nearby. So they are going to delve the area using shadow at plus three. Seven. Well, that is going to be a weak hit on a delve, which means I roll on shadow because that's the one I'm using, 23. Mark progress and reveal a danger. So we do mark progress. What is the danger? Let's find out. 51, you encounter a hostile denizen. Okay, well, that makes sense. They heard voices, it's probably raiders, but uh, it's a hostile denizen. Couple of raiders or one? Let's ask the Oracle. So 76 or more and it's just one. Oh, okay. Okay, well, it is just one. Whew. What I'm envisioning is I'm imagining that the husk has basically enslave the minds of the majority of these raiders. Is this one of the raiders that is has been sort of mind erased or is this uh, is this like someone who's serving of his own free will, which I would imagine there are still some that are. 51 or greater, this is an enslaved uh, and it is. Okay, so as they move and they, they're creeping among the edge of the courtyard, still in the shadows, as the fog shrouded night sky is, is uh, uh, overhead, they hear voices up ahead and they can see in the center of the courtyard, maybe by an ancient crumbling fountain that was built by whatever previous civilization was here before the Ironlanders ever came here centuries ago. They can see a raider who's standing there mumbling to himself. And as they kind of get a better look, they can see this raider has all white eyes. His eyes are completely white, like supernaturally white as he's sitting there mumbling to himself. And he, I think he's mumbling some sort of incantation. You know, maybe it's something when the husk steals your will to live, you, you continuously mumble off the names of the other people that the husk is enslaved, let's say. Now the question is, how are they gonna deal with this danger? They're gonna have to try and sneak by him. This is gonna be face danger using shadow. Plus three is six strong hit. Plus one momentum, face danger. They are successful in sneaking past this guard, which allows them to go off into another area through a shadowy doorway and enter a new area in the stronghold. A 66. Workshop or library? Well, I don't think there's a library here. I mean, there might be an ancient one, but a workshop. A workshop in this raider's stronghold what would they be building? Well, the obvious thing is they'd be, you know, they'd have like a blacksmith because they'd need, you know, they'd need to forge their weapons. They'd need to forge supplies to repair the ship and all that kind of stuff. But is there a chance that this workshop is in fact more dedicated to the husk? Maybe this is the place where the husk Hog Hogvendil himself uses to extract the life force from the people. I, I doubt that's the case. So zero one to 90, it's gonna be a regular workshop. 91 or greater, it's not. Uh, no, it is a regular workshop. Oh, on a match, an extreme result of twist has occurred. So it's a regular workshop, but there's a twist. The twist is, initiate 97. Initiate wealth, initiate wealth. Oh, oh, here's an idea. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna say it's unlikely that this idea of mine, which I'll tell you about in a second, it is unlikely that this is the case. So 76 or more is, is a yes. Okay, 97, here's my idea. Initiate wealth. It's a workshop on an island where Hogvendil holds sway. Hogvendil, who was the focus of the vow for Ursia, the woman who stole the spear, Ulvatan. She failed in her vow to attack Hogvendil. 
We know that because Hogvadil is still out there attacking villages. I think that Ursia hunted down Hogvadil and challenged him. She failed and she was perhaps killed, perhaps enslaved herself. I like that idea. Hogvindil was wounded by the spear. He was wounded by the spear, much as Thalgalos was. And seizing the spear for himself, he realized that he could forge this weapon, perhaps, into a variety of other weapons. So maybe, the, may I, yeah, that was it. He's trying to melt down the spear. Yeah, that's good. He's trying to melt down Ulvatan to use its, you know, sort of, storied and magical metals to create other weapons. I guess the question is, has he succeeded in melting down the spear? I think no. I think absolutely not. He's, he's, he's definitely not succeeded in melting down the spear, but it does mean that some aspect of the spear is here in this workshop. 91 or greater, he's melted down the spear. No, he's not, which means that the spear itself is here. We have to do the delve roll now. As he goes into the workshop, I think again, they're using shadow. They're being very, very cautious. Plus three is nine. Okay, well that is a weak hit. <laughs> a weak hit on shadow means we roll for sentinels. 81 on shadow. Choose one, mark progress or find an opportunity. I'm gonna find an opportunity, which means the opportunity is 66. A clue offers insider direction. He's gonna take plus one momentum from the find the opportunity, which moves him up to plus six. I think the clue in this case, uh, yeah, because we know the spear is here. I think that he is moving around the workshop. They're stealthing their way through the workshop, but something catches his eye. And I think what catches his eye is the forge area where clearly he can see all sorts of molds and, and uh, you know things to set weapons in and all this stuff. They've clearly been hard at work trying to create a variety of spears. And at first that doesn't, you know, of course there are a bunch of raiders, of course they're making weapons for themselves, sure, why not? But what he sees is that the master mold, the, the thing that they've built all of these other spears on is still there. And as he looks, he can see that that mold is filled. There is a weapon in it. And as he goes up to it, they see the spearhead. And he looks at it and he can see that there's runes carved along it. And right away, he knows what that is. That is in fact, the head of Ulvatan, Wolfstooth. His eyes go wide. Here is one of the objects of his quest. It's broken, but it can be easily popped back on a, a spear shaft, although not right now. That is huge. He has found the spearhead of Ulvatan. He takes it reverently from the wall and puts it in his pack, and they continue on through the area. So far, so good. We're doing another delve roll. In order to do that, we need to know what the next area they come across is. Fortified Stronghold, the next area is going to be 90. Something unusual or unexpected. Aspect and focus. These are from the delve tables. What is unusual or unexpected? It is going to be toxic supply. Toxic supply. Okay, so, so this is interesting. I think maybe what they come across is, is a storeroom and as they move their way across this area, there's a smell, and it's a smell of sort of rot, you know, there's sort of an acrid kind of uh, acidic kind of smell. Yeah, I think that it's gonna be um, poisoned foodstuffs, but there's a reason for that. But anyway, let, let's see what the delve is here. Let's delve the depths and see what's going on with this area. Plus three is nine, is a strong hit. Delve deeper, mark progress, and find an opportunity. We mark progress. The formable site, which brings us up to four boxes, and we find an opportunity. I think it's like, barrels of a type of poison that the, the raiders sneak into certain uh, encampments and uh, maybe posing as traitors or something. And they use this, this poison to basically like poison the water supply so that they can wind up killing a bunch of people as well or make, you know, making them so sick that they can't defend themselves. That's kind of cool. They wind up poisoning their victims first before the raid if they can, like when, when circumstances warrant. What is the opportunity? 40. An aspect of the history or nature of this place is revealed. Maybe this triggers something that, that Arn remembers Thorbjorn saying about how, uh, you know, when the raiders first came, his people tried to fight them off, but they were so weakened from something. It's the whole, it was like the whole, the whole community was afflicted by some sort of pestilence mere days before the attack happened. And of course, it's this poison. It's somebody had snuck in and basically poisoned the water supply using this stuff. I don't think he can make a move that leverages the opportunity right now. So instead he's just gonna take the momentum on this. So he's gonna go up to plus seven. So they leave the toxic supply area behind and they keep 
Delving. What is the next area they get to? 25. Connecting passageways. They move deeper into the stronghold itself. They can see a number of ancient stone hallways, again, lit by these torches stuck in uh, sconces every now and then. They're slowly padding across the ancient stone floors. They're going to delve once again using Shadow because they know they can still hear voices from elsewhere through, you know, echoing down certain corridors and things through these connecting passageways in this ancient fortified stronghold. Shadow plus three is gonna be eight. Another strong hit. Mark progress and find another opportunity. What is the opportunity? I'm gonna roll and see that it is 55. You locate a secure area. Well, I think the secure area that they find is basically in these connecting passageways, they see that there's a, a stout iron banded wooden door. And as they kind of open it up, they can see that it's, a, it's basically a strong room. And it's sort of off from the main passageways as well, but uh, there's really not much in there now, except that they know that if they had to spend time in this room, they look on the inside of the door and there's a big intact iron bar they could put on that door to prevent anybody else from getting in. So it is a secure location because it's tucked away. And you know, if they needed to go and rest or anything like that, they could probably do it in the secure area. They can't leverage this opportunity for anything they need to do right now. So uh, they're going to, he's gonna bump up his momentum to eight again for finding the opportunity and they're going to continue on. What is the next feature they go to as they're slowly making way through these maze of connected passageways inside is going to be zero nine. They find a storage or repository. We are rolling once again with shadow being very careful and we're rolling with plus three It's going to be an eight. Well, that is a fail. That is a fail as they come across this storage or repository, which means that we do not mark progress and we reveal a danger. We roll zero one, check the theme card, which is danger. Denizen patrols the area. What is the denizen? 64 is Raider. It might be a place where they just throw the bodies of those who have been drained by the husk. Oh, that's kind of grim. That's kind of brutal, actually, yeah. So they come across this chamber inside the stronghold. It's got several doors, several exits, but the first thing they notice is the smell because in the center of the chamber, there is a giant, uh, I think maybe it's, it's open. It's, it's the, the roof is destroyed, the ceiling is destroyed, so it's open to the, to the night sky. And there's this horrible smell of decay and, and rot and rotting flesh and things like this. As they move into the chamber, they can see where there's a, a, you know, several piles of bodies. And it's clear to them that these are bodies of, you know, some of them are in various states of decay, some of them are skeletons, all this kind of stuff. But some of them are fresh. And I think what they see is, they see a couple of raiders moving in from another entrance, carrying together, carrying the body of some villager, freshly dead, and they take the body and they throw the body on the top of the pile where it kind of thumps under the body. Its head turns and as the dead eyes face Arn, he can see that it has been totally drained of life. Like the, the face looks completely emaciated, almost, almost mummified. Like the life essence has been completely pulled out of this villager. Very likely this is a villager from Highmark. But as they lay eyes on this room filled with corpses, those raiders that have just thrown the body on, look at them and they see them and they pull their weapons and they rush to the attack, taking our guys completely off guard because it was a miss. So when they enter the fray, these, these raiders are immediately gonna have the initiative on Arn and Ormir. That's gonna go very badly, I think, to open this fight, but we're gonna have to wait until next time to see what that fight looks like because that is the end of our episode. Thank you so much for joining me and come back next time to see what happens with the exploration of the rest of the fortified stronghold of Hogvendil here on me, myself, and die.